presented before the House. What we see is this, exactly the same thing that's happening in the mother of all parliaments right now. England and Scotland sat down. They worked out a question together. But actually, the people who spend a lot of time on this, there are international experts who say, well, you know, if you're wording it this way, you're tilting it this way, we're going to come up with very neutral wording on a simple, straight-up question. Do you want to leave the UK, yes or no? And you know what the percentage of the Brits are requiring? They're requiring 50% plus one. So if the mother of all parliaments can accept that it's not in and of itself that bad. But here's the difference. What the Supreme Court said in that August 1998 reference decision on secession was this that you need a clear answer to a clear question. And they said that in determining whether the answer is clear, you have to look at two things. You have to look at objective clarity, and you have to look at subjective clarity. What they say as being quantitative clarity and qualitative clarity. Now that's an interesting choice of words, because coming from Shamini, where I learned what it was like when, some, when there was not qualitative clarity, because somebody rejected 5,426 votes. And we had ballot boxes where over 50% of the votes were declared invalid, so we knew that that was cheating. And I know what that looks like, and the Supreme Court knew what that looked like too when they were writing that decision in 1998. But here's what we do say in the MEP. Once the question is clear, and once everything having to do with the taking of the vote is clear, the side that wins, wins. I have confidence that the work that I've done all my life, which is to build bridges and to make sure people understand that there's no reason to go through that, it's going to work. Now, I'll take this on straight on, and I haven't had too many partisan notes, but I'll take this on straight on. The day the Liberal Party tells anybody in this room what their percentage is, I'm willing to have that criticism leveled at the NDP. The day you hear the Liberal Party say what a clear question is, I'm ready to have that criticism leveled at the NDP. We put together a bill. We gave two clear questions as examples of what clear questions were. One of the clear questions was the English question, the British one that I just described for Scotland, word for word. The other was the Jacques Parizeau question, which we couldn't resist putting in there, because that was what Jacques Parizeau had promised in 1994 when he formed a government. He said, they said, what's your question going to be? Because you might remember the question from the 1980 reference. He says, my question is going to be, do you want Quebec to become an independent country, yes or no? Something happened on the way to the forum. <laughs> we lost sight of that question, and we wound up with a reference to the tripartite agreement and all sorts of nonsense, and, and, and it lost all meaning. There's a big fight here in Quebec as to who could determine the question. I think the Brits have shown the right way to do it. You have to negotiate the question. You have to agree with where the clear question is. Since there are those in Quebec City who still say that Quebec City is the only one to decide, we've actually put a mechanism in there for a referral case directly to the Quebec Court of Appeal to help determine whether or not it actually produces the result being sought. Because don't forget, the reference case was on secession, but it also talked about the obligation to negotiate any other constitutional change when you've gone through that process in a province. These are complicated issues. I'm not saying that you can't discuss complicated issues. I'm just saying that this one is particularly complicated because it lends itself to very visceral emotional reactions, such as, I'm 50% plus one the NDP saying that they want to break up the country. Well, that's not true. And anybody who tells you that's true or anybody who says that on an open line show is being sent in by the liberals to stir trouble. And my question to that person on the open line show or to anybody in this room who thinks that that's the NDP's position, that 50% plus one could break up the country, it's go read the Sherbrooke Declaration. Go read the Supreme Court in reference in, in 1998. Go read the NDP's bill. And any other party that wants to have this discussion has to do two things. Tell you what their number is to discuss, to open the discussions and tell you what their question is. The only party that can claim that we've done both things required by the Supreme Court is the NDP. We've been clear on the question. We've been clear on the number. Same as the Brits. We're clear. Anybody who tells you because they've got a bill on so-called clarity that has no number in it, that has no question on it, theirs is anything but clear. Ours is. And I'll stand by that, and I'll debate that with anybody, anytime, and I look forward to debating that with Justin Trudeau in 2015, and I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to wipe the floor. <laughs>